Hi there. Welcome to this tutorial where I want to introduce you to the parametric vector form for the equation of a plane. And what I've got here is a plane drawn in three dimensions relative to a fixed origin and three perpendicular axes x, y and z. And if I take a point on the plane and we say that it's got a position vector r given by this red vector here. As we move this point around the surface of the plane, then so does r move. And what I need to do is to find an equation relating r to any point on the plane. Now before I go any further in trying to establish the parametric vector equation of the plane, what I'd encourage you to do, especially when you're doing problems like this, is to sketch a plane. And if we take an origin, let's say we call it O just here, there's no need to draw coordinate axes X, Y and Z like we have over here. But what we need to do is we need to take a point, any general point on the plane. Let's say we've got this point here, we'll call it P. And the position vector from the origin then to the point P is going to be called R. Now, it's going to come up through here. It's going to come underneath the plane. So I'll just draw the remaining part of this vector as a dotted line. So we've got our position vector of a general point P on the plane, given by R. Now, there are many ways that we can fix a plane in space. And one way is to say that the plane has to pass through a fixed point, which I'll call A. So the position vector of the point A will be, let's say, A. And again, we're coming up from the origin here, and it's going to pass up underneath the plane to our point A. On this diagram, I've illustrated it by the green vector here. It's easier to just see if I just show you underneath the diagram, okay, to that point A on the surface of the plane here. Now let's say that the point A is this point at the end of this pen here. And if I was to have a plane passing through that point A, you can see it's not sufficient to define a plane. There's an infinite amount of planes that pass through that point. However, if I introduce a vector illustrated by this yellow pencil, and now the plane passes through the point A, but it's parallel to this pencil or vector, then I can't have planes that look like this. They, it just restricts it to planes moving on this axis here. Now, if I introduce another non-parallel vector illustrated by this orange pencil, then if I'm to be parallel with the orange pencil, then I can move in this axis. But to be parallel to both pencils, it restricts it just to one plane passing through A. So I can define a unique plane by just giving a fixed point on the plane and the plane has to be parallel to two other non-parallel vectors parallel to the plane. And if I was to translate the two parallel vectors onto the surface of the plane at the point A, then you're going to get something looking like this. And you can see underneath the point A where those two vectors start from. So I can update this diagram here. Let's say we call the yellow vector S. I'll just mark it in like so. Okay, that's the vector S. And for the orange one, let's say we call it T. And I'll mark it in like that. Okay, the vector T. Now to get to any point P on the plane requires a combination of the vectors A, T and S. 
We start at the origin, we go up to the plane, so that's A, followed by, say, several T's and several S's. In this example, we might find that we've just got to do, say, a couple of T's, one T, two T's, followed by, say, one S maybe. Not quite. Maybe one and a quarter S's. So as P moves around then the plane, we see that its position vector R is going to be equal to O to A, in other words, the vector A, plus some amount of the vector S, let's say it's alpha S, plus some amount of the vector T, let's say we call it beta T. And this is the general parametric form for the equation of a plane. The position vector then of any point on the plane is equal to the vector that takes us from the origin to a fixed known point on the plane plus a certain amount in the directions of the vectors s followed by a certain amount in the direction of the vector t. Now I've got an example here which is very easy just based on the parametric vector form then for the equation of a plane. If A is a fixed point on a plane with coordinates 3, 4, minus 2, vectors 5i minus 3j plus k and 4i minus j minus 3k are parallel to the plane, find the vector parametric equation of the plane. So to do something like this then, we've got a drawing essentially like this, where this point A has coordinates 3, 4, minus 2, so its position vector will be 3, 4, minus 2, written as a column vector. Or you could write it as 3i plus 4j minus 2k. And then for s, we could take this vector. And for t, we could take this vector. So the answer then is that r will be equal to a, which is a column vector then, is 3, 4, minus 2. And then we've got plus any amount in the direction of our first vector. So we'll call it alpha. Although you could use any other letter you like. Okay, it doesn't have to always be alpha. And then we've got 5 minus 3, 1. Okay, and then we'll use beta in the direction of this vector here. So that's going to be 4 minus 1 minus 3. It's up to you, though, if you want to write it in I's, J's and K's, but this generally is quite acceptable, and I prefer to write in this kind of style. It's quicker, I find. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea anyway, as an introduction to the equation then of a plane in this form, the vector parametric equation of a plane. Now, in the tutorials that follow, I'll be extending this idea further. But for now, just try and be aware of what this equation is and what the component parts represent.